Yeah, the only thing that I've had a problem with so far is uh, the the PayPal integration. Because okay. if you, that's, so far there's a few ways that they've put in, uh, and we're talking about, for folks watching the replay, we're talking about Streamlabs right now, which is the service that I use in order to bring Friday night open lines to you uh, pretty much every damn Friday night here in COVID land. Uh, welcome back to your Liberty Radio, everybody. Uh, but as I was saying, Rob, when you try to link your PayPal to Streamlabs for the purpose of collecting you know, donations and, and all of that sort of stuff, it forces you into a PayPal business account. And I have not found a way around that yet. Because the nice thing is, I would actually be able to do super chats through Streamlabs instead of having to do it through each individual platform and get you know approved and verified percentage. and all that shit. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I'm sure they still take a percentage, but it's it's through either PayPal or Stripe. Which the messed up thing is, I saw that Stripe is now being offered. I have a Stripe account, but there's no way for me to link an existing account. I have to go through Streamlabs to sign up for a Stripe account. So it's, again, kind of, you know, wonky. Convoluted. Well, and it's, it's uh, redundant for all the stuff that is already set up on manufacturingreality.org. Because we already I do all of that stuff on the website. I canceled my PayPal when they dropped Corbett. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. All I don't, the dude I don't does, blame you. All the, all the dude does is tell the truth and post his sources. Like he doesn't, he doesn't uh, stretch outside of his sources other than his own. What he'll tell you is his opinion based on the sources. So it's like when I found him years ago, I was like, wow, this is so much different. Like I could already see the bullshit in the media but to see someone who like backs it up with sources, I was like, holy shit. And I found him randomly from some message board, like, so, you know, somebody talking shit on the message boards, telling somebody they sound like James Corbett because uh, it was like a nonpartisan take on something. And I'm like, oh, I got to check out this James Corbett guy. Sounds like he might be interesting. And yeah, I have uh, seen most of his stuff ever since. Yeah. Plus his old stuff. Well, he's a real interesting cat, you know, going from oh, yeah. being a school teacher to being a, a, essentially a, a media personality, a pundit, uh, uh, a talking head for lack of a better term, but still hands down one of the best researchers on the planet today. Like, I, I don't even know how you can question that at this point with his body of work. Like I put him up there. Uh, with the likes of a Bill Cooper, right? With somebody like James Mars, you know, guys that were doing it long before Corbett ever came along. And yet he's, he is that caliber as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I mean, between him and Rich Grove, I mean, when it comes to sources and T labs, like right there in the group. Oh yeah. But I mean, it's, uh, it's nice to have the ability to go, you know, run down the things that they tell you rather than listen to the bullshit that uh, comes out of people's mouths, like the, the Stu Peters and Alex Jones of the world. Alex Jones always has the documents. I got the documents that they're right, turning the right, frogs right. gay. He's, he's allowed to see the documents and read them to us. Uh, similar to uh, uh, who was that? Uh, oh, oh, uh, Mika Bern Brzezinski. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I just equated Alex Jones and Mika Brzezinski. I hope that gets clipped out uh, by our, our new clipper. That would be awesome. Spread that yeah, around all um, the interwebs. People will lose their fucking minds. I mean, it's all on the same spectrum, isn't it? The same silly... Uh, Pretty much. Over, but over dude, we have, we have such a problem with hero worship in this country. It is out of fucking control. Nobody, well, nobody 
yeah, nobody wants to take responsibility for anything. Nobody wants to think for themselves. They, they always want to look to somebody else to, to tell them what they're supposed to do. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I, I need a Trump uh, to come along and save me. He's yeah. going to kill the, he's going to kill the deep, deep state. If you hadn't heard, even though everything he did when he was actually president is contrary to that nonsense, but there's still people, you know, flying the flag and acting like this pro wrestling match that we got going on here is anything other than um, entertainment for the oligarchs who just laugh at us as they piss on our face. Yeah. I mean, did you hear Bernie? He just came out and uh, took the brave stance to um, point out all these obvious things that aren't anti-Semitic. Oh, I did mean, he? My girl, yeah, me and my girlfriend oh. were talking about it. I was telling her, yeah. That's Bernie's so courageous. A, Bernie's a great guy. He's the kind of guy who um, will sit in the corner with a video camera while his wife's banging her boyfriend. Oh, yeah? That's the type of guy Bernie is? Yeah. yeah. I hadn't heard that before. He's a great guy. Oh. See, you learn something new every day, ladies and gentlemen. I, I did not know that Bernie was a cuckold. Now I do. This is, uh, this is the type of value that you can only get from your Liberty Radio. And we're not even 10 minutes in yet, folks. But we do need, uh, we do need the tramp stamp for this episode, as the high Yona would say. Uh, today is April 26th in the year of our clownishness, 2024. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think the high Yona is going to be joining us this evening, Rob. He is uh, currently on assignment somewhere in the, the greater uh, tri-state area over there on the other side of the Appalachians. Somewhere in the foothills, maybe? P- possibly. Uh, I'm not quite sure. It, it was wow. one of those, uh, you know, double secret, super hush hush type of things. Uh, but ale- allegedly, allegedly, he is getting paid for it. So, you know, that's definitely a bonus. Well, I hope he uh, finds a good place to put the body. In that case, wow, I I, I did not expect you to go there. I really did. <laughs> I mean, man's got to make a living. He's got a lot of mouths to feed. That's true. Gonna, he does. I'm not going to yeah. judge. I, hey, I, I don't begrudge anybody how they make their money. I just ask that if they're really good at it, give me a few tips. That's it. That's all I want to know. Just a few pointers. <laughs> so a, uh, a couple crazy things happened in Philadelphia this week while I was in town. No. Um, first, there was the, uh, the Palestine protest. They were, oh yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. Enough. You filmed some of that. Yeah, I, I got a little film from my fifteenth, fifteenth <laughs> story uh, window down the street. I I was like listening, and I have two windows on you know two sides of my office, and I hear chanting, chanting, whatever it is, they live or some whatever the fucking chant is for uh, stop the genocide. So. I went out and looked out the one window. I didn't see nothing. And I got to look at the other window and they've got the whole street, you know, jammed up with people, police cars, and they're chanting. But they weren't like those assholes that go on the bridge and fuck people over when they're trying to get somewhere. They actually moved and took their protest with them. Like, I mean, if you're going to protest, don't you want to spread the word around, not to stay in one place and be an asshole? <laughs> yeah, I would think so. You know, make it uh, harder for the authorities to uh, corral you, you know? Yeah, years ago when Trump was president, he was coming into the Philadelphia Convention Center and uh, a buddy of mine were walking around because we wanted to see the circus that was following it. And uh, some dude goes riding by us on a bicycle with a speaker. He's got like just playing some music and we get like a couple blocks up and like they've got his speaker and a microphone set up into like a makeshift little uh, microphone for people to get up and talk their truth about (laughs) the pro wrestling hall of famer. And uh, like the first person's up speaking and like 
they they're like calling to people in the crowd that come up and speak and i'm standing across the street and like nobody's like rushing over so i run over and i grab the mic and i say like what you people don't realize is both parties are you know doing the same thing they uh you know you should vote third party and as i uh you know drop the mic and <laughs> hand it off and get off the off the stage some lady just starts screaming at me that i'm a misogynist and i'm a racist it was like wow i don't know I didn't uh know you were racist rod you know i don't know how you interpret that statement to vote third party as some kind of misogynist racist thing but i i guess well that's it, all... it's obvious to me rob <laughs> i i can tell you how it's how it's interpreted as racist because <laughs> What you were saying by vote third party is you were saying, don't vote for Joe Biden. And everybody <laughs> knows that if, uh, if you don't vote for Joe Biden, then you ain't black. So you must be racist. To be fair, she was a white Karen. So, What color I mean, was her hair? It, surprisingly, it wasn't like any uh, unnatural color. I'm sure it was an unnatural color, but not anyone's out, you know, inside the rainbow spectrum. Yeah. So did the did the protesters manage to uh, uh, accomplish what they set out to do? No, I'm pretty sure people are still, you know, children and women and innocent men are all still dying needlessly. But I Just hear like every real- other day. I hear there's some real estate for sale, though, in some prime areas in the West Bank right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's some nice beachfront property. I mean, you got to know somebody to know somebody to, you, you know, be able to get into that. I mean, but I think if you walk the streets of Brooklyn and talk to the dudes of the big furry hats that you can get in touch with that uh, opportunity. Possibly. Or maybe if you hang out down in the sewers, uh, you know, in the tunnels for a bit, you might bump into a guy that knows a thing or two. So, so the other interesting thing that happened in the city while I was there this week, um, got a alert on Wednesday that somebody was reported to have a gun in one of the buildings in the, on the campus. And all of a sudden <laughs> they sent out another message, you know, like 15 minutes later saying that that was a hoax. I'm like, well, that's really weird. Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure it was a hoax? But okay, everybody goes about their business. And then yesterday, a couple guys that work for me were walking um, to go to like some office up the street, and they come back with like pictures telling me some dude just pulled up on the sidewalk in front of the emergency room and shot himself in the head of the local hospital. <laughs> I was like, oh wow! What? Yeah. So what's so, what's the story behind that? Do you know? Um. According to uh, rumor around the area was that guy had apparently been in the area the day before and he was the supposed gun hoax. Um, he was like a mental health patient and I guess he didn't feel that he was getting the, the attention he deserved. Hmm. So they had uh, the car was like sitting there most of the day with just like a sh- black sheet draped over it. So you couldn't see inside the car. Wow. How, how warm of a day was it in Philadelphia that day? I was only like mid fifties, really. It oh, wasn't really that's that warm fine, yesterday. Then. Yeah. It wasn't one of those kind of days. Yeah. I was going to say if it was like 80 with about 60% humidity, uh, then yeah, that, they might want to do a little bit more than that. Fifties. Hey, you're fine. it will be fine. That's interesting though. Because I don't know if uh, you heard about it this week or not, but there was also an incident with one of Kamala Harris's uh, Secret Service detail who apparently like flipped out on one of her fellow agents and uh, something. They, they had to have her uh, committed to a hospital, allegedly. Wow, sounds yeah. like somebody somebody saw too much. Could be. I don't know. I I, mean, I think it was probably like an affair, like she was, you know, screwing around on the job, and probably the, the person that she was screwing around with was screwing around with somebody else, and she found out. Like you remember that chick from NASA that wore the diaper 
to go oh, yeah. and try and assassinate her lover. I think it was probably um, something kind of like that. Took like a 24 hour drive with a diaper so she wouldn't yeah. have to stop. Yeah. <laughs> Which I, I mean, mean it shows she, it, she actually thinks ahead. It's so. fucking commitment, man. Really? Well, I mean, she did work for NASA. I mean, not that I've sat around and contemplated all the reasons I'd piss myself um, to go accomplish some kind of task, but that's, you know, dedication. Yeah. Maybe that's not, maybe that's why I'm not a millionaire, right? <laughs> well, I mean, like I say, it just tells me that she was committed to her man. She was literally willing to do anything to, to be able to get to him. That's uh, you got you got to kind of admire that a little bit. We I think we could use more of that in that world, not necessarily in like the the batshit crazy context, but just you know people being committed to to the tasks that they want to perform. You know, you always hear the stories about the dude stalkers, but I know there's female stalkers out there, whether they be like social media or yeah, you know, uh, showing think- up at work or whatever. I don't know, because so fatal attraction like put that idea into all of our heads back, what, late 80s, early 90s, something like that. The the psycho jilted lover. Uh, But I haven't I haven't seen a whole lot of evidence of that in the world. It seems like women are more. Passive aggressive with that sort of thing, or maybe, maybe it's just the experiences that I've had uh, with women that lead me to believe that. I don't know. Well, there's, there is a, uh, I don't know if it's just like a media sensation, but there is a whole rash of female teachers sleeping with teenage boys. And uh, that is true. And it seems like most of them, I mean, not all of them, but most of them are like attractive women who could have, you know, gone somewhere within their age range or at least above 18 outside of school. <laughs> Sick yeah. bitches. But well, and it I, does. It does seem again, maybe it's just the way that the information gets fed to me, but it does seem to be predominantly uh, female teachers who have been getting into trouble uh, last 20, 25 years. Like you don't, it it doesn't seem like you hear about male teachers or professors engaging in inappropriate relationships with their students as much as you do women. Uh, There was a uh, teacher in my kid's middle school who was uh, touching 12 year old girls, half formed titties. And uh, I guess he was, threatening them and I, I guess you know my daughter had him as a teacher but fortunately she was a late developer so he, he well, didn't uh, yeah. he didn't corner her in the science closet and uh, touch her in sixth grade fortunately but he uh as far as i know still in jail or beat up and killed who knows when you disappear into the system that's right he he could be dead for all you know, because yes. uh, apparently they don't survive long in prison, from what I'm told. It's apparently a code among thieves, and that's don't touch fucking children, you sick yeah. fuck, or we'll kill you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like it used to be with with the mob. You know, you don't sell drugs. Yeah, well, the Gambinos really. Uh, oh yeah, they changed, changed all changed that, that and modernized it. Yeah. Well, shit. Once they saw how much the the East India Company was making off of the fucking drug trade, they were like, what? Why are, why are we not doing this? Yeah, I mean, they had BCCI and the Vatican Bank and all of their subsidiaries that they were just laundering all that money through. It's crazy. Yeah. Not to mention finance and gladio operations all over Europe and South America. <laughs> well, you name it. Speaking of, Rob, did you hear that there was a bank in Philadelphia that was seized by the FDIC earlier today. No, I did not see that news. Yeah, Republic First Bank in uh, in Philadelphia was seized by the FDIC. Let me see if I can find the article on that. Pretty crazy. Uh, 
I, I wonder if that's the same bank that's in all over Republic Bank. There used to be this guy. Um, the hell was his name? Maybe it'll come to me. But he had uh, founded Commerce Bank, which was huge in my area. Uh, they were like known for being open seven days a week and having late hours, you know, outside the normal banker bullshit where they're not open while you're working <laughs> right. or they're, they're open while you're working, I'm saying, and they're not open when you're not. But so this dude got bought out by his board and some Canadian company, TD Ameritrade came in and took over his commerce bank. So he, uh, I guess used his connections to get another bank called Republic up and going. But I don't know that it's Republic first. I don't know. We'll find out here in a second. Yeah. All right. So let's see. So Philly's Republic first, seized by FDIC, and apparently uh, Zero Hedge is trying to say, we fucking told you so. Jesus Christ, man. Everybody was saying that we told you so after they, uh, they ended the protection program uh, back in March for all of the banks. It's, you're not fucking profits, Zero Hedge. Oh, admittedly, they were a couple of weeks off. Yeah, no shit. So the FDI yeah. seized the troubled Philadelphia Bank, Republic First Bank Corp, and struck an agreement for the lender's deposits and the majority of its assets to be bought by Fulton Bank. Isn't that interesting? So yeah, they apparently yeah. they just came in and said, all right, we're going to shut you down and sell you to these other guys. That's another bank in uh, the New Jersey, Pennsylvania Is area. It? Interesting. Yeah. So Republic had about $6 billion worth of assets and $4 billion in deposits at the end of January, according to the FDIC, uh, which was considerably smaller than the $1 to $200 billion with uh, SVB and Signature Bank. The FDIC estimated the failure will cost the deposit insurance fund $667 million. Oh, they could not go for it, Rob. <laughs> they could not go for it. They, I bet it was probably it's probably it's six is repeating, and then they they're just gonna, rounded it up for gonna, the article. That's what it update was. The, they're going to update the press release and say that six million has been unaccounted for. Also, <laughs> oh, oh my! So the Wall Street Journal reports first or Republic first had for months struggled to stay afloat. Around half of its deposits were uninsured at the end of 2023, according to the FDIC. That's starting to get repetitive. Uh, its total equity or assets minus liabilities. Yes, thank you. We know what equity is, Zero Hedge. Uh, it was $96 million at the end of 2023, according to FDIC filings. And that excluded... $262 million of unrealized losses on bonds that it labeled held to maturity, which means the losses hadn't counted on its balance sheet. Which you means see. we spent your money, but we uh, haven't had to tell you because that date hasn't matured yet. <laughs> we haven't had that date yet. Right. And now they don't have to pay it because technically they're not in business anymore. So it moves wow. on to the next guy. Uh, the Williamsport, Pennsylvania-based Fulton Bank. Good so lord! How many banks do you think are going to be left standing at the end of this bloodbath as it slowly six. trickles down? Six. Yeah, there will be okay. six major banks left. I I would six. almost guarantee it. Citigroup, Chase. Um, who else you got? Oh, J.P. Morgan, obviously. Well, that's Chase also, J.P. Morgan Chase. That one's the obvious. Oh, that's true. That's <laughs> right. That's right, because they, they did merge and all of that. Uh, all right, so let's see. I don't expect Wells Fargo to survive. I'm not sure if PNC is going to survive, because they've been scaling back. Yeah, um, they've, uh, they've removed uh, tellers 
from like oh, yeah. my local branch. Oh, really? That's who I that's who I bank with. Yeah. Damn. I went in there. I went in there one day with a bunch of cash to deposit, and uh, I walk in, and there's you know no tellers, and somebody walks up and meets me, the customer service person. I'm like, I want to deposit this cash, and they're like, well, you can either go, you know, five miles down the road to the next branch, or use the ATM. Like, really? Wow. That's really strange. Like, so the person that talked to you couldn't even take your deposit? No, but they could give me a new ATM card or a loan application, I guess. Oh, wow. I guess that's, I guess that's why they're there now. Did, did you ask them if, if they could get you some cash? Did, did you ask them if they're allowed to touch the money? <laughs> no, I didn't. But they That's one of my that. favorite questions when I go into the bank. Are, so do they actually let you touch the money? You know, I, it, I was it working usually gets the, a, an interesting response. I was working at this bank years ago, installing like the software at three different branches. And they had this girl who was like the branch manager of one of the branches and turned out she was uh, skimming the till and uh, putting in like fake receipts. And eventually when people were actually looking for the real cash, they found out she had took like 20 grand in a couple months. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, uh, Hobo Etiquette in the uh, Rumble chat mentioned Bank of America. I do expect Bank of America to get sacrificed. I don't know if it's gonna be this year or next year. Uh, but I've had my eye on Bank of America now for about three years. Uh, and I expect them to, I don't expect them to, to make it to 2030. Yeah, I think, I think they're sure going to get offered up. Yeah. But I, I also Sparta think that's, that's what's going to allow, uh, you know, the, the other big ones to survive. Because there's still, as it stands right now, there's there's too many banks for them to be able to go to the whole uh, digital currency fucking little Ponzi scheme that they've got worked out, where the private banks sell to the consumer banks, and the con or no, the private banks bypass the consumer banks except for the ones that survive. They get like special privileges. It I, it's fucking convoluted. Yeah, and then the lending rates are out of hand. So who's really wanting to borrow any money? Are they actually letting people borrow money? I didn't think they were. I'm, I'm pretty sure I get you know ten offers a week in the mail trying to loan me money. No, oh, wow. <laughs> so I guess I mean, somebody I get out a lot there. of phone calls about uh, stuff, but I don't, I don't pay attention to them. It's all bullshit anyway. It's just a digital transaction. There's no actual cash involved in any of it. They're like, okay, you want to consolidate? You want to do this or that? We'll give you some fake money in yeah. your account. Yeah, it's just numbers on a computer screen. They're just uh, literally just shuffling numbers back and forth in a fucking database. That's it. Yeah, when they do their uh, so-called quantitative easing, or uh, printing money like they're fucking playing Monopoly as the rest of us take it as like, is that really physical money or are they just, you know, hit, holding the fucking enter button on their uh, keyboard until it keeps adding the numbers up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's exactly it. I, I can't remember what I had heard, but there was like a number of actual circulating cash and it was re relatively low compared mm -hmm. to the fact that every dollar in circulation is based off of the 33 or 36 and trillion in debt we're in. Yeah. It's uh, it only like uh, a few billion in active circulation. Yeah. Like something in the 50 range. I yeah. thought I saw. Yeah. Like Which, not, not even close to being representative of the gross domestic product. Which is really surprising considering they were supposedly dropping like pallets of $10 billion and $100 bills over in Iraq mm -hmm. way back when they were bringing freedom to those poor fuckers. <laughs> well, that's, that's how we got the inflation. You know, they just kept printing money and sending them over there pallet by pallet. 
Yeah, and then nobody could account for it, surprisingly. Well, yeah. It just happened to disappear. Because it, it goes missing, Rob. Stuff goes missing all the time. Like, don't, don't you have stuff go missing in your house? Like, you go to get your, your laundry out of the dryer, their fucking sock missing. Where the fuck did it go? So, so. It's, it's the same thing. It's just a pallet of money instead of a sock. Well, Shelly's been manufacturing um, five dollar sure. bills, crisp five dollar bills over there in uh, some dark section in New York. We don't like to talk about. God, I wish. <laughs> What's up, Shelly? It always it always cracks me up anytime you take anything over like a twenty. In some places, even a twenty, and they use their special little marker to mark it. And I actually asked a girl one day. I was like, "So, what happens if someone hands you a fake?" And she's like. Oh, it turns brown on the bill. It's like, oh. And what do you do? What did they do? Well, if it's fake, they give it back to you and say, uh, this is fake. And I guess. Wait, aren't, aren't they supposed to report it to like the Treasury Department or something? Like I'm, I'm sure you won't get out of the parking lot before the cops show up and start beating you, <laughs> stepping on your neck. It's George Floyd. <laughs> Well, God knows the, the guard in the bank isn't going to do a damn thing about it. He's just like, no, I got to call somebody. I, I saw it firsthand out in San Francisco a couple of years ago. in a C, you know, the CVS, I went in there and I was standing in line and uh, some dude came up and snatched a $20 bill that some guy in an electric mobility scooter had put on the counter to pay for his stuff. This dude snatched his 20 and ran to the door and they have security in there. And the security guy grabbed the guy and jacked him up against like a sunglass turnstile thing and let him go and then grabbed him again and jacked him up again and then let the dude go and let him run out the door. And I'm just thinking like... And he still had the money the whole time? Yeah, he didn't take the money back or anything. And I'm what looking the at the point? guy and I'm looking at the guy in the wheelchair thinking like, are they going to try to make this poor guy pay for his purchase that he just put $20 on the counter for? Or are they going to take responsibility for letting this dude run out the door with his 20? <laughs> so what uh, did they do? Don't leave I us don't hanging, know. I, man. I, I got called to another line. It was none of my fucking business. <laughs> I just need to keep my head up. <laughs> well, there's so many counterfeits in circulation. It's like anybody could have a counterfeit bill. Yeah, but if so. you're going to counterfeit, you use like tens and fives, maybe twenties. If you're smart. If you're smart. I mean, not that, you know, it seems like the criminals, if they just would like invest a little time in a trade, maybe learn how to be a carpenter, you know, build a fucking building or something, plumber, other people's shit pays a lot of money. Nah, we're going to try some bullshit scheme and, you know, waste a lot of time. With skills that aren't going to do us any good in prison when we end up there. <laughs> Wait, prison or the FEMA camp? Because those are different. Those are two different skill sets. I don't know. I I, I was yeah. practicing a little domestic terrorism this week. I know it's shocking, but um, just getting the garden ready. Oh, I know how it's frowned, yeah. frowned upon and. You, you do States. have to specify when you say domestic terrorism, because I, I didn't know if you were going like Uncle Ted, uh, you know. I don't I know mean, if that's how you uh, get down, Rob. I don't agree with Uncle Ted's methods, but I, I'd i love to see somebody debate his points. You know, uh, at this point, I, I don't think I really blame him. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to resort to violence myself unless cornered like a rat, you know, if someone brings the violence to me, what are you gonna do but defend yourself? But I'm not going anywhere to uh, seek it out anyway. So what's my, on your mind tonight, Shelly? Oh, I was going to mention my sister, my sister met uh, Ted Kaczynski's mother. Oh, really? The one that turned him in? Yep. Wow. What a fucking scurvy motherfucker. Well, he, he was, he does lectures and stuff. And this was a long time ago when she was working at SUNY Oneana and he was doing a lecture there and 
that was about the time that she was she had tested to get into the FBI. Uh, Quantico uh, sends recruiters to to Oneana to campus to recruit every once in a while and to do tests. And that was about the time that she she did one of the tests for the FBI. So she talked to him. He, she wanted to be a profiler, and she was talking to him for a while about um his role in the FBI, like his his kind of work, and how a lot of people that work for the FBI are actually civilian consultants and they're not actually FBI employees. So, well, I'm sure um, most yeah. of the people out there January 6 weren't actually FBI employees, but contractors. Yep. Yeah. Probably contractors. That would make sense. Jesus, there's so many fucking contractors in and around the district. It is unfucking real. Well, you know what? It, it seems like most of those there, there's so many people who are in that like intelligence apparatus all over the world that they never get to like really retire. They're always once in, they're always in, and eventually they get fucking assassinated by the people they've been working for because they know too much well it's the way the system is set up right it's it is actually set up to benefit uh the people working outside the people who are not actually considered uh federal employees even though they work for the government that is their employer that's where their money comes from but it so the way it works is you go into the government as a federal employee, you work for them for X amount of years, whatever it is, two, five, ten, whatever. And then once you're done with your contract, you go into the private sector, you, you create like a consulting firm or something like that, and then score the fucking government contracts to do the exact same work that you were doing before when you were a government employee, only now you're getting like 10 times as much money for it. Yeah, like all the private intelligence agencies yeah. that have kind of popped up that they uh, can feign unaccountability because they just have the dirty work done by them. But well, it's in, like a, it, in essence, they're yeah, still it's just paid. like Ed Snowden, right? Ed Snowden didn't technically work for the NSA. His employer, I mean, ultimately his his employer was the NSA, but his paycheck came from Booz Allen Hamilton. Yeah, that's the way most of that stuff works. That's there's so many of those companies that are just sucking on the government tit. And that's why uh there's always a boogeyman. Hmm. Yeah. There's always a reason to kill people, I guess. Gotta keep their income somehow. Not everybody yeah, gotta it's... eat. Yep. Oh, that's all you yeah, really. Just their job. Oh, if 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 you have any extra money laying around and you want to watch it expand, just follow what the Congress critters are doing. And there's all kinds of like trackers out on social media that track what these assholes do. And every one of them, supposedly, not, not every one of them goes into politics poor, but you know, there's a lot of them that go in that nobody would say they're rich. They might be well off middle class or something but by the time they're in there for a few terms these assholes are all you know got multiple fucking vacation homes and have millions of dollars in the bank i remember when the because they they oversee all the regulatory agencies right and now now you've also got a revolving door there where people are going back and forth between government and industry all they shouldn't be allowed uh, congressmen and senators shouldn't be allowed to have hold stock while they're in office. I agree. I mean, even if they did that, they would use some bullshit loophole. Some family oh, yeah. member well, would be holding. Oh, of course. But it would still make it a little teeny, teeny, tiny, tinier bit more difficult. Well, it would act... Um, it, yeah. it, it would... <laughs> it would be more like these people actually cared about us. But yeah, nobody nobody gives a fuck. 
Well, it's but, like they keep on they keep on uh, introducing bills for term limits and stuff, and you know it's just never going to fucking happen because you need you need a majority vote, and you know the majority is not going to fucking vote for term limits because like why why would you why like well, yeah. you barely fucking work you barely fucking work yeah well people vote in dead people I mean not just dead people voting but dead people get voted in. Because all people know is yeah, that has the, happened, D, yeah. the D or the R, because that's what they've always voted. They don't really get into the politics or pay any fucking attention. They just know that the TV that they watch tells them that the other people are bad guys. And do you guys do you guys remember when a dog was voted as like some town's mayor or something like in that? Minnesota like, was it Minnesota? Was I think it was like back in 2016, maybe sometime around that. Yeah. I thought that I thought that dog got reelected mayor. <laughs> yeah, that, re- it was a while ago, but yeah, that really happened. <laughs> yeah, I do know about the guy. I think it was uh, was just like Mississippi or Alabama or something. He died like two weeks before the election, and, and still won. got elected because nobody well, wanted to vote for his opponent. It's like that guy that I think he ran the bunny ranch and he was running for office and he died like right before the election. But I think he was still on the like still on the ballot. I think he won, too. And he's he dead. Died. He died in a furry <laughs> orgy and he still won. I'd have to look that up. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he was elected when he was dead. I mean, he ran, you the, know, bunny, honestly, he ran the bunny ranch. I, I would I would vote for a dead person. Because I know they're not going to fuck me over if they win. They're dead. Well, unfortunately, there's the uh, unelected assholes behind them who get to appoint the next guy in charge. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So, and then they've got my consent, motherfuckers. Yeah. I've I'm heard glad that you saw the flaw in that, Rob. I, I've heard that bullshit my whole life. Well, if you don't vote, you have nothing to complain about. Like, fucking really? Like, if I actually had a choice of who to vote for, and it wasn't some establishment propped up idiot, I don't think you'd get into those positions without having some kind of um, P. Diddy freak out, super freak out party, or you visited Jeff Epstein at some point. I'm, I'm sure there's, they're just two that you know of. I'm sure there's a hundred other ways that they um, get dirt on those people. Oh, yeah, there is. I was actually listening to the latest uh, Nick Bryant podcast uh, this evening while I was making dinner. And it was it. He wasn't interviewing anybody. He was just going over like his uh, his Epstein notes. And it's unreal. The the people that this guy was connected to and like the power that he was able to wield. Like yeah, it, well, he he basically took he took the the Victoria's Secret brand, and I'm talking about Epstein here. Like Epstein is the one that created Victoria's Secret and made it what it is today. It wasn't fucking Les Wexner. It wasn't. It was his money. Wexner, yeah, Wexner didn't have control of it after 1991. So that was he, all Epstein. Well, there was. Uh, he he like signed over his New York mansion to Epstein. Dude, like he I said. gave Epstein power of attorney. Yeah, that's a yeah. Which a lot of dirty. Essentially, secrets. means Les Wexner did not control his own affairs because Epstein could come in whenever he wanted and do whatever he wanted, and there was you couldn't stop him. There's nothing you could do about it. I mean, like how do you how do you how do you get to the point when you've only know somebody for a couple of years that you're willing to give them that much power over you? I, I just really wonder what he was doing working for Bill Barr's dad. Like, what was that whole thing? Was that some kind of like gate program, you know, try to pick these kids up and get them into their program kind of thing? Like, what, what was he doing in that? particular instance because that doesn't really make sense when you look at his you know overall body of work I don't know. other what, than the, what exactly than, was the dalton school it's a prep school right 
Yeah, it's like a rich kid prep school. I think it's for like entertaining um, arts, isn't it? I don't know. I'm about to find out. I think it is. Performing arts or something? I thought it was a performing arts school. So I, I've talked about this like a million fucking times, but um, I grew up with uh, Kelly Sadler. She was uh, Trump's press coordinator or something that got fired for saying some shit about McCain in a private meeting. But um, uh, her her uh, maiden name is Raydell. I grew up with her family and pretty, pretty blonde girl. Um. She was in the pageant. She was in uh, the pageant uh, circuit, growing the kitty pageant circuit, growing up. She, she went to Hamilton College and stuff. But uh, her parents sold the, the milk trucking uh, business. It was a milk transport business all through, like I think, most of New York State, and um, moved to Florida, where Mar-a-Lago is. In I think it was like the early 2000s when the, the youngest finally went to college, and then Kelly eventually went to school for like Chinese studies, and she worked she she lived and worked in China for for years. I I last I knew it was like teaching kids English in Chinese schools. That's that's what I knew, but I I don't really know what she was actually doing out there. <laughs> Because, like, the more time that passes, the more I fucking wonder. And she um, ended up being a professional liar. That's but I, it makes me wonder, like, like, you know, she was in, she was in the, you know, the kid pageants and stuff, but she was the face of the, uh, it was before it got milk. It was the real milk campaign in the 80s. She was the national face of the the real mail campaign. So, and we were all on the gift. Of, I mean, a lot of us were in the gift of program. I was on track to be a fashion designer in New York City. I, I got accepted to Pratt, so I was in her class. Uh, another person I w- that was in my class, she was Rocket, and like choreographer and cheerleader for the New Jersey Mets. Um, but like, yeah, it's my town is really weird. So I'm pretty sure we're all. So what kind of MK Ultra shit did you see there, Shelly? Like it was um, <laughs> playing oh, that, that that frequency that seemed to turn everybody into a different person. You know, it's funny you say that because music is fucking huge in Oneana. Like I grew up like inside the music, the, the music community and the art community, and that's pretty much all of Oneana, or at least was. But it's got huge uh, arts and entertainment laurel canyon east you're saying funny you say that (laughs) so one of my brother's best friends uh when he was a teenager uh is ben joplin janice joplin's nephew and he lived right next to my grade school and he was over always up always over at my house smoking weed and listening to music from my brother that's cool. Yeah. Is yeah. there a FEMA office there? I don't know. Oh yeah, and my my brother and a bunch of people I know are all friends with Sean Lennon too, because uh, hmm. Yoko's farm is just outside of Oneana. I mean, that's kind of one of my uh, daily stress stresses. I don't know which FEMA camp I'm going to end up in. Like East Coast, is there going to be like one big East Coast region, or are they going to like break it up into, you know, Southeast, Northeast? Oh no, they've they've already got the regions separated out. You're yeah, uh, just, region there's, three, there's, I think, Rob, or maybe not. You, Hold on, the the UN um, s- sustainable development regions. Well, considering I'm I'm in central or upstate, depending on who you are, New York. Um, there's there's like there's all the state prisons and stuff are up here. So, and there's well there's the the Rome base that's like 45 minutes away from my place. There's a lot of bases. There's oh there's uh 
the um oh what are they called the towns the fake the fake or the old the abandoned towns that they do practice drills in what are those called oh, i forget what they're called the ones that yeah. they, like do the nuke drills on supposedly yeah and like uh like the national guard and state police and stuff use them um there's there's a handful of those just around my area but they're they're all over the place up here and it, the other weekend like everybody was freaking out about all the black hol- helicopters even though there were there were plenty of like everybody knew there was a drill everybody knew because they they made sure all the counties made sure well, we were well it, aware it was a drill and everybody was like it's not a fucking drill you're just saying if you, it's a drill. If you didn't know, <laughs> the world the world ended when that eclipse happened, and they shot those rockets. Oh, holy shit! Eclipse. Yeah, it was the it was. And the uh, CERN the collider weekend. came on, and you know, I I'm pretty sure uh, it must have been even... when we were doing that uh, that magic so get, during the yeah, eclipse. So, Fuck. So, yeah. Uh, Sorry, the devil. The devil comet and. I know they didn't publicize it, no, but it you know those, dragon, those heifers was, got... Wait, was it Devil Comet or Dragon Comet? Wasn't it the mother was, of dragons? Like they were trying to get devil. all the uh, the Game of Thrones people all spun up? I thought it was the Devil Comet. I thought it was coinciding with the uh, the coming of the Antichrist after the slaughter of the, the red heifers. I, I'm not sure. The, the know, cartoon, very the cartoon writes itself. Going around, that's for sure. I'm sure. It's strange that uh, that didn't happen. They had like the date set they were going to do it. How do we then, know it didn't happen? That's what I'm saying. Like, it did it happen, and they just didn't publicize it because they know it'll be inflammatory when they, you know, turn up at the Alaska Mosque and um, well, start. I mean, if, for the if you're going to the trouble of getting a permit for it, I would imagine that you are also then going to make sure that nobody is able to get any footage of it whatsoever. Because by getting the permit, what you're doing is saying is, I have this space for this time. I can do what I want with it. And if I don't want anybody to know what the fuck is going on in this space, nobody's going to know. I mean, they had to burn it though. They needed the ashes to spread over the mosque and themselves. And does it does it have to be burned in the temple <clears throat> or in I the in the space? Can you take it somewhere else and burn it? Doesn't it just have to be sacrificed there? I personally don't believe in fairy tales, Drizzle. I mean, but you know, dude, these crazy dude, motherfuckers. Twenty was it twenty? When was Khashoggi killed? Uh, was it in like 2018? Was it 2018? Dude, they got him out of the hotel room in pieces without leaving a drop of blood from the room to the car, from what I understand. So why can't you just do that with this cow too? Wasn't, professionals. wasn't his I, uncle the uh, Iran Contra and uh, like largest weapons dealer yeah. in the world at one point? Yeah, his his uncle was Adnan Khashoggi, uh, uh, Maxwell's predecessor. Yeah, like that. That means that you're always, <laughs> if you're in that in those circles, you never know when you're. Well, not that's in what that I'm saying. Anymore. That's that's what these people do. Like they they make shit happen and you don't find out about it until afterwards on purpose. Well, you know about those military tribunals where they're taking all these fucking <laughs> uh, that clown shit, man. I can't wait. There's going to be another like pop up of that again soon, near the election. I think all the there white is- hats are uh, secretly taking them. Uh, breaking up the child sex rings and taking them to military tribunals and oh they're executed but who's out there right now is either ai or clone or clone yeah 
You know what I'm not going to do if I'm trying to break up a child sex ring? That's sit there and watch hours of child pornography. Like, they yes. did, yes. like they made that dumb fucking movie. Like, oh my fucking God. <laughs> I, I like, think they they're literally just throwing it in everyone's face. That's what they're do you doing. Know, we, we were advanced enough years and years and years ago for computers to be programmed to go through that stuff instead of humans. So you, they don't have to watch it. But no, they have to watch every second and every frame. Is Caviezel just like a, a fucking uh, believer dupe? Or is he, uh, you know, an evil motherfucker? Do you remember when he was... Uh, uh, filming Passion of the Christ and he was 33 when he was filming it and he was going around telling everybody he's three, he was like Jesus Christ come back or some shit because he was 33 filming it. He got struck by lightning during the filming or some bullshit like yeah. that. Talk had about like some method acting. <laughs> had, a, had a heart attack or like he had all kinds of health problems. Yeah that there was, was some like, crazy shit going around that movie. <laughs> It, the least of it was Mel Gibson. <laughs> I mean, if you want to know who runs the world, just have a couple drinks of Mel Gibson and he'll fucking yeah. fill you in on it, I hear. I don't know, you know personally, but that's what I hear. I'm going to try and do that time, one day. The more if I ever had the opportunity. What's your, what is your drink, Mel? Because I, I, if I have to go suck dick in the parking lot, I'm going to scrounge up enough money to fucking hear your story, dude. <laughs> The more time that passes, the more I'm I'm agree with Mel Gibson. Wow. I mean, it's, I always uh, liked him in that the That did not Weapon just movie. come out of my mouth, did it? Yeah. <laughs> that, that movie wow. Apocalypto that he made, like I thought, like it told, someone told me before I watch it that they they speak like very little, and what they do speak is like the native dialogue and. But you still got to watch the movie. I'm like, okay, most movies, there's a bunch of dumb fucking dialogue. Anyway, so I'll give it a shot. And it was like edgier seat, like interesting, kind of exciting movie, kind of piece of time as best they could uh, make, I guess. Hmm. You know, back in those you days when they'd cut your heart out. I do think I to the guns. Yeah, I do think some of the people in Hollywood are in on it. Like I don't I I don't think there's any way at this point that Alec Baldwin is not in on it. Like I think he knows he can he can get away with whatever. Oh, it doesn't God, yeah. matter. Yeah. Was there something you were going to say, Shelly? Oh, uh, the the movie conspiracy theory. I think that broke him. <laughs> you think so? Him. Yeah. I mean, because he that that came out in the nineties, and then all that stuff that happened was like what in the early or mid two thousands when he was like berating his his ex wife over voicemail and going off yeah. about the Jews in Hollywood and stuff. That was that was some that was, that was like less than ten years after conspiracy theory was was released who who knows how controllable you are if you just happen to be like a hit sensation and they don't have the chance to you know give you their proposition to make you into that you kind of get there naturally i'm i'm sure it doesn't happen all that often yeah maybe maybe do uh maybe um acting in that movie woke him up i don't know his dad was a uh a Roman Catholic, um, Jew hating, very vocal person. So he was always getting, yeah, he was point. always, he was always getting like shit about that. And then he, uh, unfortunately got drunk and got pulled over by a Jewish police officer and spouted oh, all yeah. that shit off on video. So. I, um, it's been so, so long that I can't remember <laughs> details. Uh, he, his family had a farm for a brief second when he was a kid. I think it was like in Mount Vision or Mount Upton. Up this way. 
random fact. I swear to God, I have a random fact I could probably connect like to a lot of celebrities. It's a lot of shady shit going on in upstate New York, Teresa. Oh, upstate New York is fucking weird. I believe it. I've been to upstate New York. I know what's up. I've been yeah, to Lake I George. Think... That's an awesome area. Oh yeah, I love Lake George. I I went on the mini haha. That was fun. It was the steam engine, the steamboat that plays music through the pipes. Hmm. I I went on a hike on the only trail in like the Lake George like town, and like we're sitting in a diner looking at the menu, talking about this trail, saying it's like a beginner trail, and uh, about an hour and a half later, and a lot of sweat. <laughs> and after running across like fucking 20 people on their way back down telling us oh you, you got a ways to go yet <laughs> we finally get to the top of this steep ass hill and we're like this is no fucking beginner trail <laughs> I mean, so I, I went up there with my parents in the 90s and we tried driving around Lake George we went up we started going up one side and like I think we were still driving for an hour we were even like halfway up so we ended up having to turn around because there was no way in hell we were going to be able to drive around that. I think well, it's like 36 or some odd miles just one way. Here's the trick. You can either hike it all the way from the bottom and you get up to this top area and you find out that it's like bus tours go up there and you could have drove your car all the way up to the top and got the same experience. <laughs> um, yeah, but- that, that would twist me off. <laughs> finding that uh, that out after the fact if you know it's pretty cool they got some uh plaques up there that tell you the history of lake george during the revolutionary war believe it or not there was like battles on lake george between the british and the american forces yeah i uh my family uh on my mom's side at, at actually probably on my dad no both sides have been in like every every war since the early 1600s. In like Lieutenant, like Lieutenant Dan from Forrest Gump. <laughs> yeah. I hope not. I hope, I hope none of them. I, I hope it wasn't they died in every war. That was his story. Yeah. Like someone Wait, in his family <laughs> died in every war. <laughs> one of my one of my cousins was in the navy, and he. Uh, I think it was like by the engine and the engine blew up. It blew him up on the submarine. Wow. Yeah. He can walk and stuff. It, the instructors it, up it through just his hands. Blew him up. <laughs> when I was when I was in Navy boot camp, the instructors told us <laughs> that uh sub all the guys that were who were uh, assigned submarine duty that they went down as ninety men and came back as forty five couples. <laughs> Of course, right after that, Bill Clinton came out and said, don't ask, don't tell. So it was almost like prophetic that they told us that shit in boot camp. Hmm. That whole don't ask, don't tell bullshit was bullshit. Yeah. There, there was uh, like, there was no uh, reason definite to programming that. going on there. Yeah. 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 I, I, I had a they, fr- they needed some kind of discriminatory law against gay, gay people in order to like further this fucking weird ass agenda that's going on right now with the trans and the gender shit and I miss my gaze. <laughs> I miss my normal gaze. <laughs> <laughs> uh one of the dudes I hung out with in the Navy was a gay guy and like everybody knew like his mannerisms and all that he was gay. Nobody gave a fuck. We all hung out and partied. Yeah. Um, and it was already uh, at don't ask, don't tell. Like, but but it was funny. At some point, um, somebody was like borrowing his car, and they like went into the trunk and found like a bunch of gay porn magazines. And then he like came out and told us all. You know, he got us all separately alone, all the people he hung out with to tell us he was gay. We're like, dude, we knew and? you were gay. We knew you were gay. <laughs> Nobody fucking cares. Yeah. I know. It's like uh, I I I had this friend from like seventh grade until graduation. All the girls had a crush on him. And he was a dance, and he was some fucking drama and chorus, and so 
like he's gay they're like no 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 he's so cute he's so wonderful I'm like, got a meticulous appearance i'm like he's a flavor <laughs> he's a flavor no he's very flamboyant he was very flamboyant hmm. and they're like oh well you know he he dated this girl and that i'm like from what I hear, they never even kiss. <laughs> wow. Friends of mine. Yeah. That isn't, so, that isn't a hint. That was my best friend in high school. Was that guy you came, were just describing. Yeah. Then he graduated yeah. and he came he started working on off well, he started uh, off Broadway. He was a puppeteer for walking with uh, dinosaurs when he got started. And uh but yeah, he uh graduated high school, moved to the city, worked on Off-Broadway, and came out as gay, and we're all like, and? It's like, everybody that I went to high school with that came out, I'm just like, are you the last to know? Because we all fucking knew. Are you the last to know? (laughs) (laughs) That's, That's what it's like when people come out. I'm like, is this just news to you? Like, are you, is this supposed to be like you want a party? Do you want a, a cookie? Like, go start. Like, we all knew. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is strange. My my girlfriend's daughter, his best friend from high school, is a gay guy, and like he wasn't out yet. But my girlfriend had like filled me in, and like the first time we were all like hanging out, I I made some comment about <laughs> you know him and men, and like he got all bent out of shape, and like my first like if nobody even told me my first impression would have been this guy is a gay guy. And uh, I'm just like, <laughs> okay. So he got all bent out of shape because um, I uh, knew I, someone had told me apparently that he was gay. <laughs> and like a year later, he's like dressing as a drag queen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I had a friend uh, like over 20 years ago, uh, when she became an adult, he started doing drag in Binghamton. Stayed married. I mean, I I don't remember if. I mean, I'm old. I I remember like, or anything, but the drag queens would be in the diner in the morning with their fucking five o'clock shadow. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wearing their prettiest dress. Yeah. <laughs> When I was in art school in Utica, uh, we'd uh, some of us went to uh, the gay bar, and uh, oh, it was called that place, and and its logo was an upside down pink triangle. But, um, oh, that's not a dead giveaway. Yeah, some of our yeah right. Uh, some of our professors hung out there. We'd go hang out with our professors there. It was cool. I was like. I mean, I wasn't. Yeah. What's up, you Yoda? Fag hag show. Yeah, I just went. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I was Smoke a fag more hag. The weed. Oh shit! He's got the god voice on. <gasps> oh no! It's just for my tagline. Just oh. for the tagline. Don't worry, Greg. All right. <laughs> Damn, that actually looks good with four people. There you go. It's good to be square. It's hip, hip. Huey Lewis. Fine all right, now talk all there. over each other. People <laughs> love that shit. There, 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 everywhere. Like Spider Man name up in this motherfucker. So, are you guys worried about Klaus Schwab and his organization dictating how you live in your life, or are you just uh, like me thinking, I don't really give a fuck with these people? Worried idiots about say? it? No, I'm pissed off about it. I'm pissed off about it, but at the same time, it's like, even in fucking China, like, as long as you're uh, <laughs> not crossing the street on uh, all the million surveillance cameras, they're not going to beat you down or weld you in your house because you got the sniffles. A lot of people Today. aren't buying their shit. When I made a, a song with... Um, uh, Dr. Kingsley Dennis and Dead Fella called um uh which one was it? I think it's 
Moloch Bestia remix. Uh, at the very end of that actual song, I mixed in the voice of um, Herr Klaus Schwab himself, uh, lamenting the fact uh, that they recognize that both he and his leadership role and the World Economic Forum as a whole is actually losing image and its brand is suffering. Its brand image is suffering. It's losing influence. Well, I mean, and when you try to kill people, that's going to happen. That's to yeah. be expected. That should right. be part of your business model. Well, he's just a fake you figurehead. Think? The cartoon supervillain is all he is. The guy they throw up there in front of you to hate. He's like going to be dead any day now. Oh, so. he's in the hospital, Rob. Haven't you heard? <laughs> he's on death's door. Oh, oh no. Yeah, we got we got to pray for Klaus to make you sure he pulls gonna, through and gets out of the hospital. You think he's ready to molt? Then he's gonna shed well, that skin. I'm, I'm I'm wondering if maybe that was put out into the media because he he actually is uh, ill, and uh, they they want to get people thinking about him to to generate some energy. Last I heard, he was 86 years old. I mean, days are kind of numbered any day. That's right. That it's a, it's amazing that he survived COVID. I know. Man of his age. Why do you think the Grim Reaper is getting up at 4.30 in the morning every fucking day just to go back down to the Red Roof Pizza Hut with the checkerboard fucking tablecloth and get on that goddamn claw machine and go fucking snatching fucking souls again? I mean... Haven't you seen the claw machine meme with Grim Reaper? Come on. Drizzle throws that shit out there all the time. That's good meme. And in, in, in the last like year, my man has gotten some scores. I know, <clears throat> right? Keep chucking quarters in there, Grimmy. Do your thing, <clears throat> homie. Hell, he got Henry Kissinger the other day. He liked shit his pants. Way <laughs> and to go, OJ. Grimmy. Got OJ, and too. OJ. Kissinger and OJ in the same year. Fuck yeah. Wow. Yeah. And now he's going to get Klaus Schwab. Oh, my God. Grim and shit. Jacob Rothschild. And Rothschild. Holy yeah, crap. Yeah, man, dude, dude. I'm telling you, man. He's yeah. like every him up. fucking three or four days. Here comes Grim Reaper on the claw machine again, man. He's he's wearing that motherfucker. They're going to have to replace the jaw stick on that goddamn thing. Fuck, man. So so if Naval Harari is uh, Klaus's right-hand man, does he become the next spokesman? Or Fuck, yeah. they going to... You think so? He's like a I soulless, I think the, uh, dead-eyed fuck, though. I, I think he's worse Zionist than Klaus. Brand is, <laughs> you know, speaking of brands going to shit, uh, the Zionist brand has never, ever been in lower standing worldwide and within the United States. Granted, it, they're, they're waving more batons and squirting more... Um, chemical weapons on the student bodies all across the country. But that, that again, just goes further to prove the Yona point here. Israel got some image issues. And, you know, that's to be expected when you continue to prosecute a fucking live stream genocide. And you might be careful about your wordings in English, but, oh, fucking jump over there into Hebrew and get you some of that Amalek-type shit where the well, fucking turbo-racist genocidal maniacs really talk about how every man, every woman, every child needs to be killed. And then they talk about, but people should care about this systemic rape of Hamas against the Israeli women. And anything, they'll, they'll manipulate anything. And try to make it all about their cause. Are you saying rather than seeing the commonality and the human and, and the humanity that we all share? It's 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 not a democracy. It, it, there's not equality. The Palestinians and the West Bank and the Gaza Strip should be full Israeli citizens. It's either all Israel or it's all Palestine. This shit that's been going on since 1948, since since the Nakba, since Ayama Nakba, it's all been fucking Israel, man. 
quit playing fucking games that Palestine even exists anymore. It's a militarized fucking occupied zone with fucking occupied zone A, occupied zone B, occupied zone C, surrounded with fucking D9T kill dozers, fucking constantly shelled, constantly bombed. Syrians can't go into fucking Israel. Palestinians can't even hardly travel from Ramallah to Rafah, which is from the West Bank to the Gaza Strip, you know, because they're they're not even connected. There's no land bridge or corridor. Like, you know, for example, when look, Berlin look, was under siege. Let's and the just US call this what Berlin it is. This is. It's Rothschild Empire. Yeah. Is what it is. Yep. Like, we, we have all of the fucking artifacts to be able to, to put the whole fucking story together. This is I, empire, I, plain and simple. But they are European. building the Federated States of Greater you Israel guys, right now. You guys are, it, you it, guys are it, missing the uh, simple answer to it all. And it has we, never been more obvious to the world how much of a European imperial project the Zionist state is now. As if there wasn't any doubt before, well, all th- all you know, the curtains have pulled been pulled aside for everyone to see that it's who is still ride or die with genocide in Israel. And they're far and few between, and now we know. As I mean, we ourselves already knew, but I mean the the world at large. And and so at this point, the United States and Israel have never been more isolated geopolitically i think we can make everybody happy by taking ukraine and israel and making them battle it out for the hundred billion dollars that we're given like why not like just take russia out of the equation and the palestinians and let those two fight it out for a hundred billion dollars put it on pay-per-view everybody's no, gonna honestly, be happy i used to think that there was like some type of vested interest or that there was like some type of greater strategic value in picking and choosing these battle lines, whether we're talking the River Dawn or the, you know, the Phoenician coast of the Mediterranean and old you know, ancient Tyre and Sidon and, you know, or, or uh, Beirut and, uh, you know, Qatar, Gaza, you know, Gaza Strip, you know, and instead this has nothing to do with strategy. It has nothing to do with an international rules based fucking order. It's all crap. Ultimately, it just comes down to wherever there is conflict, wherever conflict can be encouraged, they can sell more bullets. They can sell more rifles. They can sell more missiles. They can sell more tanks. The only thing that matters is selling more death. It, it, it's, there, there is no strategic interest because, I mean, when you look at the, the hard power and the soft power of the American Empire and the British Empire and the French Empire, it's all fucking bluster. They're, 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 the U.S. Navy, for example. U.S. Navy ain't... They They can talk all the fucking shit they want. The Fifth Fleet, the Sixth Fleet, the Pacific Fleet. The U.S. Navy is fucked, man. Fucked. They can't get any ships fixed. They can't get any fucking ships built. Ingersoll Rand is crap. Crap. Hampton's done for. Norfolk is done for. Oh, yeah, it's being for, uh, parceled up and sold. Yeah, they sold it to all a bunch should, of foreign yeah. countries. Yeah. So, you know, all gone. I, it, they want to bring on World War III. It'll be, a, the, the, it'll be such a devastating defeat for the United States. I can They'll see have the no States choice but to join in out. a union with Canada and Mexico. Yeah. You're absolutely right, Yona. Yep. What happens when they start using sovereignty? What what happens? What what happens when they start using the direct energy weapons and the anti gravity craft and uh, all kinds of shit that they've been saving up for the occasion? Do they really need it? Do they really need blue beam? I don't think they do. Look at look at look at these protests at the universities this week. Look at how easily and how quickly. They were able to whip all those people into a frenzy. It was yeah, like not, fucking clockwork, man. Like we, we have not made any fucking progress since 2020. None. 
problem is that reaction they get on TV and bluster about it, and the solution is new legislation to um, you know curtail protests. Lather, rinse, repeat. It's the same I mean, old fucking game. Same old bullshit. And yeah. then you know when when the other uh, fake political parties in charge, then all of a sudden you know we're gonna have outlawed this and that. I mean, you you heard what Joe Biden said about June sixth. How it was the worst day in the history. I can't remember what I was doing on that June sixth in particular. 6th. But what happened on yeah. June sixth? That's what that's what Biden said in his um, last uh, uh, talk. Yeah, points. that's the the worst the worst day in American history, Yona. It's Rob. Rob's been drinking and smoking a little bit tonight. You have oh. to forgive him. I think he meant January sixth. You know, no, I, I was. Oh really? I was just quote. I was just quoting what Biden said. I, oh, so I have, Biden, I, so Biden said June six. Of course, it doesn't. He did. It, it doesn't change the fact did. that I've been drinking and smoking. He was. He's I, probably still upset about Uncle Bozy Rob. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Those cannibals yeah. are motherfuckers. That's right. That's right. I, and cannibalism. And, and you know, the cannibals eat everything. The cannibals even eat the teeth. There's no dental records. There's nothing. I don't know how people is is money that fucking great that you'll in the go pot. up there and, like popcorn and say these lies and just try to gaslight themselves and everybody else that this guy is somehow competent or running anything. I got to say my favorite Joe Biden speech of all time is when he plagiarizes almost word for word that Irish politician. He's talking about, <sighs> you know, you know, me wife, me wife. She was the first in her family to go to college. Yeah, it's me wife. And uh, and I grew up just a working boy, working in the coal quarry pits. And, you know, and, and then you, all of a sudden, you know, literally, like, what is it, a couple months later, Scranton Joe. Scranton Joe. Biden, Joe. <laughs> literally is giving the same fucking speech, word for fucking word. And who points it out? Johnny fucking Carson. Yeah. That shit was all over Johnny Carson's show. I mean, that's the thing about it. Joe Biden's been the laughing stock for being a lion sack of shit, a racist and a womanizer. His whole about career. 40 fucking years, yeah. man. Johnny Carson's From been the start. off of fucking television. Again, that's how you know he's years, a made man. man. I'm going to say 84, 85 was the last late night with Johnny and Doc Severinsen. Anyway, go ahead, Drew. Yeah, no, I'm just saying in. that's how you know he's a made man. We we were saying this last week. You can't touch Joe Biden. Go ahead, fucking try. See what happens. You yeah, can't he, touch uh, him. He sat on the uh, Senate Intelligence Committee most you know most of his career, yeah. ranking member at the uh, end of his career. So he uh, is probably well versed in what goes on in the real world outside of the TV. <laughs> Well versed, he's fucking profiting off of it, man. His brother Absolutely. Jimmy runs runs the fucking operation for him. Like his yeah. his family is fucking deep in it. That's why that's why Hunter was sitting on those fucking energy boards. It wasn't just Burisma. There were other fucking companies that he was a board member of. And they were strategic companies. Yeah, a bunch of Chinese companies as well. Yeah. That's a uh, crime syndicate, but I mean... But people, if you don't know, go read... um, uh, Who is it? Uh, Peter Schweitzer. I think it's called um, Superclass. Like he he goes over all of these uh, all of these families, and they are families like fucking the Bidens and the Kennedys and the Pritzkers and all of them. Yeah. Yeah. They're the all American in the fucking blood, game. The American royalty. Yeah. We well, have our own royalty here, England. And, you know, I like the I, point I, that. I think uh, we can give studio, England a run for the uh, money with the Kennedys. I think we can. I think we got some winners in the Kennedy clan. Oh, yeah. Well, they all. Bobby. Bobby. As, I, as I, I, I want to point out what My favorite studio is the one that looks like Gary Busey. said in the chat there. Uh, Studio 8424 says, it is not imagination, or it is not imagined there is no countries. There are no countries. Only 
corporate legal fiction. Yeah. And so that you don't like to the Brands. city of London, the city of Rome. Se sounds like Ned Beatty's speech in Network. He's, yeah. Uh, pointing out. <laughs> yeah, doesn't it? Mr. Beal. <laughs> Did yeah. we chase Shelly away? Were we too intimidating? Three dudes, one chick. She's gone. She's gone yeah. dark. I think so. Oh. It was it was Yona. It's the Yona. I think Yona brought a cop out. She got a little nervous. It's okay, Ooh. Shelly. We don't bite. We just try to make <laughs> you laugh. I just step away for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> I knew. That's why I started talking about you. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> At least I was listening. So are sure. you guys ready yeah, for was... higher coffee prices? What? No. What? Whoa, what? wait, what? Uh, I can't out. even afford fucking food as it is. I yeah. live on coffee. Well, I if coffee you do... Stop, I'm, a, I'm a tea drinker, so... Are you? Give a fuck about the coffee. If you do oh, instant no. coffee... Or you you like going to the coffee shop to get their coffee because a lot of that is you know basically instant. Uh, yeah, the robusta coffee bean variety is uh, not doing good, and expected oh, that's good. to I don't, go I don't up, up, anyway. up. Well, it's they got espresso a more... bean. I only fuck with that dark espresso bean. You know what I'm saying? Kind of coffee that you can drip on the metal and watch it melt right through, like on the Terminator movie. Well, yeah, but Hard a lot of these, a lot of these uh, gourmet coffees are actually blends, where they're right. blending in two, three, sometimes four different types of bean uh, to to get that taste. The cartels are taking over with avocados, from what I've heard. <laughs> There's there's uh, quite a few coffee roasters in my region. Uh, Death Wish is out of Saratoga Springs. Well, in like right around there. Wait, there's a, there's a coffee called Death Wish. Death Wish coffee. Why yeah, am I only so, finding out about this now? It's, it's, <laughs> there's a lot of fucking caffeine in Death Wish. It's, it's so fucking good. Wow. And they have like this awesome like uh blue. It's like a blueberry crumbler or something like that. And they, it's it's a seasonal flavor. Uh, you're They're talking flavor. my love language. Wow. Ooh, I love coffee, folks. Love this coffee. is why Shelly is on this motherfucking show. <laughs> Go ahead, Shelly. I I worked at a couple of coffee shops. But... Wow. I love. Yeah, and then, and then there's Utica Coffee. Utica Coffee is really good. I like their cannoli coffee. It's got it's got um real real flavors in it. It's it's got natural flavors in it. It's not artificially flavored. Like I, I'm, I don't like artificially flavored coffee unless it's from Stewart. Stewart's has awesome coffee. You know, um, uh, I've been given some thought here to uh, how I could possibly participate in the upcoming Third Eye Carnival here in about another ninety days or three months or whatever, or two. I thought you were going to go to Pork months. Fest. Is that happening at the exact same time? No. No. Porkfest is the middle of June. It's yeah. Like the 17th through the 23rd, I think, of June. Yeah. Yeah, but that, there'll be a Grand Theft World tent there. That's a Grand Theft World thing. The The Third Eye Carnival is with uh, AM Wake Up Crew and all the assorted marmot fun. Um, and so if it's already booked up with different acts throughout the performance. Oh, yeah. Yona can play live. Um, and he's pretty good. The other thing that I talked about, because, you know, the last time I did a festival with um, uh, Ryan Christian, with the uh, Last American Vagabond, and with uh, Craig Chardula, a.k.a. Pasta, and it was actually put on by Courtney Turner there. Hi, Courtney. And, um, you know, she said they plan to do another one. And, you know, what I talked about was, you know, the next time around, I would rather be like uh the guy that the the dj over in the corner and i've always got something played up to play as background music to be filler between acts as they're moving one off the stage and putting another one on because i would rather use it as an opportunity to uh 
put more focus on these remixes where I've got like Michael Badnerick or Richard Grove or uh, Carol Quigley or um, Eugene Victor Debs or Muhammad Ali or whatever. You know, I've got all these different house mixes with like the, the Howard Zinn and on. You know, I'm just giving examples of like, I just think. I've got this artistic vision of like, instead of it being me doing my piano and which I, you know, Driz, thank you, Drizzle. You know, I, that's what I did before. And I could certainly do that again and come up and do a couple of the uh, cold play, like acoustic numbers singing and playing piano. But I'm thinking of like, you know, and Drizzle's played a lot of it on, on the Grand Theft World Liberty radio here. A lot of these remixes that I've made where I've used, Richard or Carol Quigley or I, mean, I, I I hate to start naming it. There's I'm leave people out, but I mean, because I, I try to make music with a message, but it's gotta be fucking vibing, man. It's gotta be bumping. You know, I mean, that's the thing. I, hopefully, you know, I've shared a lot of my music on AM wake up and, and artist collective. And uh, that's actually the stuff I like the most. You know, this is you, uh, is you gotta you have like layering a, rhythms and and all of that sort of shit. I get off on that shit. You know, you gotta have a separate like DJ show where you um have a little dance party action. Yeah, with that, your... that's what I'm talking about. But like you know, just having snippets of it between that. But then again, you know, if it's gonna be more than one day, there obviously would be an opportunity where I could actually play the Lady Marmot DJ set. Because I mean, I, I made a custom DJ set for our marmotist. Hi, Ange. Anyways, you know, it's, yeah. it's and it's called the name of the album is uh, uh, you know the kind of geese the kind of which just means chair it's chair keeper marmot lady music and it's uh, I think album twenty six I, I want to say, uh, but anyways. Uh, it's like a two hour long DJ set. And that's the one that's got Richard Grove and Ryan Christian. And, um, oh, I keep forgetting her name. Shelly, what's the name of the black poet lady uh, that I fuck with all the time? Um, Maya Angelou. Yeah, that's her name. Maya Angelou. Because um, oh, that's yeah. the one that I used on the song for James Evan Pilato with the Media Monarchy. I mean, there's just a lot of, there's a, you know, I, I'm, I'm just looking at the next opportunity that I have to showcase the music that I've worked with. I want to take it as an opportunity to showcase other people that I've remixed. And that's why I remixed them to begin with, because I, I want to bring more attention to Ryan Christian or Carol Quigley or you know, Oren Lyons, uh, chief of the Onondaga of the Iroquois Confederacy, you know, and Syracuse alumni, go orange. Um, you know, I, that's the one, I showed you that video, didn't I, Shelly? The one of the Wizard of Oz, Oren Lyons and the Wizard of Oz, where he's talking about the flying monkeys and the Wicked Witch, and he's breaking it all down, what it actually means. Because he says that uh, Frank Brown, the guy that wrote The Wizard of Oz, actually lived right there uh, in upstate New York there, just outside of the Catskills. Yeah. That, there, where? Where, where is he from? I'll Frank find Bell. out. By the way, Shelly, you and Rob are both in FEMA Region 2. So you might Yay! actually end up in the same camp. Yeah. We're going to be in the same camp. Yeah. That's so cool. Wait, what region is West Virginia in? Uh, is it the I don't same know. I already <laughs> closed the uh, the window. I think you're in region three with Virginia. Oh, no. But yeah. see, the problem is this is the tri state. And so, like, literally every day, whenever I go to work, whenever I happen to work, didn't work today, but I mean, Whenever I work normally, I'm in Kentucky, Ohio, West Virginia, three, four, five, six times throughout the day, just back and forth, back and forth, crossing the bridges. And so it's going to be weird if FEMA 
decides that well Ohio's in this region and then Kentucky's in this region down there and then West Virginia's in this region over there and then they roadblock all the fucking bridges. That that would that would suck. Yeah, L. Wow. Frank Baum uh, from Chittenango. Chittenango. Yeah. Chittenango. Yeah. 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 Chittenango. Yeah. Chittenango. Chittenango. Not Chittenango. So, um, Chittenango. I don't know. Yeah. Chittenango. Uh, yeah. Did I'm you guys have any? Uh, sorry. Oh, I'm in Did Chittenango I? County. <laughs> Did you guys have any idea? Tony Myers was uh, saying his farewell on uh grand theft world yeah he announced it at the last town hall yeah he announced it at the last town hall okay yeah we actually we talked about it on uh get fact harder last week yeah like two days after the announcement yeah Yeah. so now we know you are you don't watch on on thursday nights rob you know i'm usually (laughs) a wednesday night listening to the music i dig that i dig that can't catch them all. That's all right. <laughs> I know it's. But um, did they uh, mention who was going to be filling in? I see Scott Armstrong's jumping in this week. Yep, I'm glad you asked, Rob. Uh, that is correct. Scott Armstrong will be co-piloting the mothership on Sunday night. It should be a good one. He's that's, he's just that's... getting all the Grand Theft World love this month. You know that that that's really cool because. Uh, I've actually smoked weed. But anyway, yeah. Scott knows Yona. Yona knows Scott. Oh, nice. I was thinking maybe he could bring in some of that wellness company money to the Because, uh, of course, when I went down to the, the cause fest there and was hanging out with Ryan and Tosta and uh, what was that guy's name from the InfoWars? Harrison. Harrison. Smith, all sharp dressed with his suit. I hey, listen. Nappy pocket, their pocket nappy. Anyways, um, you know, I'm hanging out, and, and Scott come by, and, and I, I talked to him, uh, and was hanging out with him the last day, and then like finally, when it got to the end, after I performed the last song, uh, Norfolk Southern Blues, then he, uh, he and I were like breaking down the chairs and shit. Plus, I was talking to the other guys uh, that were hanging out with me there. Um, the the guy, uh, oh man, uh, his last name is hard to say. It's got a bunch of K's and stuff. It's like Shashepti or something. It's my, my homie there with the uh, computer teaching of children and stuff, talking about the technocratic data collection and schooling and stuff. Uh, I'm trying to think what the name of his book is. Phenomenal guy. I ended up getting him a spot on to David Knight after he was on my show. And then the other guy, I don't remember his real name, but his pen name is Etienne Laboite. Howard. Uh, Howard, Howard Lichtman. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. 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 uh, you know, they were just hanging around. They had their own booth set up there. Uh, I gave Howard some buds at Porkfest the first time I was there. Nice. And then he showed up an hour late to the uh, interview he had scheduled with Rich. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah, the only thing that was awkward at the cause fest was like they were making a movie or a documentary or something about the cause fest the whole time it was going on really and they had a crew in the green room that was interviewing every single act that went on stage yeah so you got interviewed by them right no no did you, like did you find out who they were like do you have a name well, yeah the like i hung company? out with them and i'd talk to them and then after they'd been doing that i was like you know i've done one song i'll be going on and doing another song it's like oh, we'll, i don't remember we'll you to, telling me that before we'll get we'll get to interviewing you eventually and then finally you know at toward the end of the last night i see him leaving with all their gear and i was like hey man you never did talk to me oh well, yeah maybe, sorry we gotta go bye maybe you did and i just didn't connect that particular dot until right now uh but uh, I'm like, well, that was weird. But, you know, the thing of it was, when I went down there, I just it's went really down weird. to volunteer. I, I, I just went It's to amazing volunteer. that a, a first-year festival would have a, a, a crew there filming a documentary about it. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah. They were, like, interviewing every single I, I don't think even, there. like, the first year of Anarchapulco, there was anybody there really, like, because, documenting you know, like, it. There, were, there was a book to act. And it was the first festival. Then when it got to like the second day, I don't know how much I should go. Anyway, but anyways, there was stepped on feelings. It's like anything. 
some people show up late some people didn't show up some people go on too long they were trying to keep the schedule and then the schedule got a half hour behind and then two hours behind and then the other guy then shows up late and he's like well i want to go on right now and the guy form is taking forever and you know it was just it, it it's no one really took over as a stage nazi and i guess sometimes you need a stage Nazi. You need well, somebody manager. with a sheep hook that's going to go up manager. on the fucking Apollo stage with that sheep hook and say, hey, time's up. Gotta go, buddy. Yeah, you Keep gotta have game. somebody running the fucking show. Yeah, yeah. Hey, if you're doing if you're if you're doing this gig and some billionaire is uh, handing out money to uh, promote their silly company, uh, <laughs> take the goddamn money until they try to tell you what to say. That's my advice. <laughs> and so, it, you know, people... when I drove down there, I just took my keyboard with me. I didn't take my songs. I didn't take my, you know, anything but just a keyboard. And because I figured, you know, when I go down there, I'll just hang out, move chairs, smoke dope in the green room, play on my fucking keyboard <laughs> in the green room, you know. And after hanging out for a couple hours and playing the keyboard, the other bands were like, well, where are you going on? Like, well, I'm not one of the acts. I didn't come here to go on. There's like, fuck that, man. You should be up there playing. And so it was the other acts that spoke to the stage crew and then introduced me to the guy that was running the stage. And so then I said, hey, well, whenever you want to throw me up there, I, I got a song or two I can do or whatever. So that that's how I ended up doing one song here and one song there. And, um, and I... And, you know, through the show, every time a new act goes up there, they have graphics and their name and all that and who they're representing and their links and social media handles and all that shit. And then both times I'm up there, nothing. <laughs> who the fuck is that? <laughs> well, all the feathers and shit. What the fuck is that? Anyway. <laughs> But luckily, Death to Tyrants was kind enough to go into Courtney's live stream because it, it was live streamed across platforms while it was taking place. And so um, Death to Tyrants was able to go in and snip it out. At one time, Shelly had actually given me the Rumble R Ripper or whatever you can use to convert Rumble videos into MP4s. And I had it on one of these laptops. Oh, uh, J Downloader too. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah that's uh, that's open source, uh, yeah. open source software. So how'd you get your uh, good. how'd you get your laptop back up and running, Shelly? This fucking <laughs> week fucked right off already. Holy fucking shit! Um, <laughs> God. Uh, so I did a restore on it, but yeah, I. You it, mean the, I have heard. The, the, cra the crazy stuff that guy was recommending didn't work? You mean the stuff that I said to do, the first message? <laughs> yeah, I had already started all that, but I couldn't find out. I, I I thought, like, it didn't save, but apparently I just, I just needed a little patience. <laughs> it is real funny oh when somebody... It's real funny when somebody starts talking crazy shit, like trying to like say big words and, you know, use acronyms that nobody understands to try to make themselves seem smart. And like, you've been doing that shit for your whole fucking professional career. And it's like, okay, first off, you're just like, you're talking shit. And now you're like, you know, just making like these ridiculous suggestions. My man was, uh, off his rocker, but glad you got it. I worked out. I was laughing my ass off at that because it just I've known so many people who have worked in IT and stuff, and I I my one of my sister's longtime friends actually has an IT company or IT business. He he uh I don't know what it is. June Connect, like he, that's his that's his business and software and. So I've been, I've been hearing this shit for like fucking twenty five years. I was just, I was like, wow, this this all sounds familiar. My sister worked in IT up at Zuko, and yeah. 
He went from giving bad IT advice to saying that he grows uh, poisonous mushrooms, um, gets a pillow full of them every two weeks, and. Uh... <laughs> well, Tallulah, so, Tallulah posted something that was obviously like not psilocybin mushrooms. So if Tallulah's posting that, it's definitely death caps. <laughs> you, you're gonna die from these, sweetheart. And he's like, yeah. ah, it was the trip for three days. And she's like, no, no, you're really gonna die. <laughs> Well, that's what happens when you're living off the grid, but you still have an internet connection to talk shit on some message board before I am wake up. <laughs> I, I don't understand what like motivates like internet trolls like that. It so sure um, is, it sure is I, fun when you trigger a troll though. You're have you just have, one one emoji or one word responses and you're getting paragraph after paragraph in, in return and kind of a thrill i weren't we just talking about this again you yeah know, last night night drizzle yeah did you uh cover you the uh beef you had in courtney what beef with courtney <laughs> what are you There's talking about of, rob some kind of ex uh beef oh we had a disagreement a disagreement yeah she thought we were saying the same thing and we were not wow yeah that was how it ended. I haven't listened to her too much. Um, I've heard her with uh, Ryan Christian a few times. And she said uh, some wild, that, that, wild shit that Courtney. seemed a little uh, outlandish. That's the same. Courtney Turner. We're talking about the same Courtney. Courtney Turner. Yeah. Actually, Courtney the, Turner. She yeah. took over running the. Because originally it was Scott, and then she took over. And yeah. um, what's really interesting is because, like, um, her. her uh, her dude there, like, where was he from? Down south somewhere. Anyways, like, you know, he was cool as fuck. And he was explaining to me, like, it's only been, like, recently that she she uh, started figuring all this shit out, or, or I don't know what you call it, you know, uh, having the, these epiphanies, you know, and mm. she's just gone full bore into it, researching it, and and, I mean, her own personal story is is pretty amazing you know like uh in terms of the physical rehab and everything that she's gone through to even be able to walk again much less doing like acrobatics and stuff like it she's really talented um and it's interesting to hear her takes on different issues as she gets into things because knowing what i know she's coming into it really without this huge base of background information and context and everything else and history and all that stuff that's in my head or or like that's in Richard's head or you know a, a lot of us in Grand Theft World are already coming into it being um not just well read but well versed on having what the fuck lived is really through going the on. fucking shit for the last yeah. two decades <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're and, trying and to say, she's Yona? New to the game. You know what I'm saying? She's new to the game. I mean, technically, it's... if you want to like get real deep into it, we can go back into the 90s. But yeah, well, I it's, hadn't uh, quite uh, figured it out at that point. It, it's funny when people come in after they see like a few modern things and they're all wide eyed and uh, then they start believing every like bullshit Alex Jones thing that goes out. Right. And uh, then they get discredited easily because they're latched on to shit that has no actual proof behind it. If you're wondering why the Yona is the way the Yona is, okay, one of the first things that my dad let me read that he had bought when we still lived in uh, Nova, Northern Virginia, um, was an entire printed transcript from the uh, government printing on GPO. Uh, of the transcripts of the Nixon White House tape, what's known colloquially as the Watergate tapes, where they were, um, you know, stenographers went through and they transcribed every single recorded conversation uh, from the bugs that Nixon had in the White House uh, and on the phone. 
So what's to the what's to the story that Nixon had the dirt on the Kennedy assassination, and that's uh, why the CIA went and set that whole Wargate thing up to discredit anything he would say afterwards? Well, there there is so much in those Watergate transcripts, and I can't remember even half of it because I read it when I was between kindergarten and first grade. <laughs> so it's got I me. Mean, you know, I, after. After learning all about Richard Milhouse Nixon and then going into first grade, yeah, I was already like, um, long story short, at the end of second grade, they wanted to. We're still working on Dr. Seuss back then. They wanted to demote me uh, back to first grade. Dude, I loved it when we got to watch the Lorax. I'm sorry, Ian. uh, I got to the end of second grade, did my first communion. It's Catholic school. Did my first communion. They wanted to demote me back to first grade. And so at that point, my parents were like, but he's read, he just finished reading the entire micro and macropedia of the Encyclopedia Britannica set that we just bought. And it only took him a couple of weeks. You know, and he's in the second grade. How can you say he's retarded and needs to go back to first grade? And so at that point, my parents took me and see all these fucking head shrinks. I had to take all these fucking tests and stuff. And so... Then there was this big confrontation between my parents and, and the headmaster at St. Catherine's Parochial School. St. Catherine's of Alexandria Parish. And uh, and so we're up there with um, the sister, because of course it was run by a nun that actually wore, you know what I'm talking about, Shelly, the fucking big penguin fucking nun hat. The flying nun hat? It's sticking out and the big fucking penguin suit. Anyway, so parents but it's my, well it's actually just my mom my dad was working that day my, my mom's up there she's like i've got the test result he's reading at a sophomore in college level he's got a senior in high school math level he's not retarded in any way we're just gonna pull him out of this school were, were your parents know. disappointed well i later found out why they did that it turns out before I began my studies in the first grade there, because I went to kindergarten at the public school in Hodgenville, yeah. Hodgenville Elementary School, because the parochial school did not have kindergarten at that time. We're talking 1979. <laughs> I'm really old. Um, so they didn't have it in 79. So for the first grade goes to begin, and it's – the fall of 1980. And unfortunately, my first day of school just happened to coincide with about 60 days after my parents as consulting engineers with our consulting engineering and surveying business based with our office in New Haven, Kentucky. Uh, During the months of April and May of 1980, they had conducted an energy audit and inspection of the St. Catherine's parochial school building and found that it was full of asbestos and all types of other (laughs) carcinogenic and toxic things just all not not just asbestos but a lot of problems and so with the report that they had to file with the commonwealth of kentucky in frankfurt capital um the state then came in and told the parochial school that they were going to have to remove the asbestos insulation from the pipes that were in the cafeteria. Because at this time, it was not ordering them to tear out all the asbestos. Or This was 1980. They didn't really give that much of a fuck back then. People they are were soft just like, hey, days. you've got this open asbestos uh, insulation on the pipes from the furnace directly over the tables where they eat in the cafeteria. And it's literally leaving asbestos piling up on the tabletops where they fucking eat you need to do something about that and they got really fucking butt hurt and they had to spend like some forty thousand dollars and school actually started a week late because of what they had to do in order for the state to take the padlocks off the doors to open up the school and then when they took the padlocks off the doors one of the students who walked in was And Zilmo, that's their fucking kid. Oh, my God, they're sending his kid to this school? 
<laughs> Fuck you, kid. Yeah, so all through first grade, they locked me inside the classroom when they all went out for recess. And that's how I learned to pee in a trash can. I'm not scarred. <laughs> I already forgot about it. Sounds that way. Sounds like you adjusted well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I learned the act of contrition. Never forgot the Apostle Creed. Hey, at least you got a good life yeah. skill out of it. That's right. And I got my first communion. Thank you, Vegeta. There you go. Like 10 years ago, they closed down a bunch of schools in the district that my kids went to for mold like problems. And like right after they reopened the stuff, they were having like, you know, basketball games and the gym in the building that supposedly had been remediated. And you couldn't even get into the auditorium without running through like a hallway that just smelled like mildew. It's like, wow, these people really took all those um, federal funds and put them to good use, it seems like. They're still like freaking ceiling tiles that have uh, water stains on them. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Right above me. Uh, <laughs> uh, we got very fucking apartment. Anyway, um, it's it's funny that you mentioned the asbestos in in the schools and stuff because when I was when I was in high school, they they were doing remodeling on the on the on the, on the school. Like they started maybe about halfway, maybe a little over halfway, and they started doing asbestos abatement while we were still in school they were supposed to wait until the end of the school year to start asbestos abatement and they had all the ceiling tiles down they were all out and there was plastic out the only thing like between the ceiling like where all the asbestos was the opening and us was like the shitty fucking half ass put up their Cheat plastic. It was falling down on us while we were in school for like months. And yeah, I I really think that caused some health problems. You know, there there, but, is, there is one thing I do remember. Wait, wait. There's more to that story because uh, there's also the water treatment plant. Now, uh, where where the um the high school is, it's like there's a street and then right here is like the drive and it's called the S curve because it curves, but it like goes down and then goes up to the high school. Yeah. And at, at, at the very top of that, where, where the road meets, meets the, the drive is the, is the um, municipal water treatment plant. And so a lot of people that have gone to that school have come down with like really funky illnesses uh, I know, so, and like I think with the people I went to school with, I think it might be a combination of both uh, the the asbestos shit and the um the uh the chemicals from the water treatment plant because there, there's also a creek that runs right in between the street. And don't the breathe the air. Don't drink the water. There's shit and everything. Who so that? who said that? That was me. No, I thought that was a direct quote from somebody. I just made it up. Oh, okay. Sorry, Shelly. Go ahead. Shit. I forgot where I was going. Uh, I'm people sorry. getting sick oh, at the no, no, school no. from the water yeah. and the asbestos so, and everything there there's, on campus. There's been, there's been a usual amount of people that I went to school with that have had like, brain tumors and shit like that. Uh. Oh, and cancers that like old people cancers at really young ages. Like, uh, one one person I graduated with, her younger sister was diagnosed with rectal cancer in her early twenties. Wow. Well, yeah. Uh, pain in the ass. Tumeric. Somebody, THC. yeah. Somebody that was in my sister's class, I think. She Organic just died. She just died from an autoimmune disorder, which really fucking terrifies me because of all the stuff I've got going on. And, uh, but she was like, she was like bedridden from it. I think she had like Yambre or something, or something I mean, like, it, or something like it. But, um, like, yeah, funky autoimmune issues. I 
one person I went to school with, she had, she had breast cancer probably like five times and she died in her 30s. Wow. There's so many, yeah, there's so much more. There's so much more. I believe it. I mean, cancer's all over the place. Yeah, and we were protest like, when I was in school, we were protesting, like, PCBs in the water and stuff, and I, my memories are kind of foggy, but I almost think that water treatment plant was part of the protesting. I feel bad for anybody to get steady water. I'm happy to have a well. Oh, man. Our city water is this, you can smell the chlorine. Just, it, it, sometimes it's so strong, it just knocks you right in the face. Yeah, they have a water cooler that's filtered where I work in Philly, and it smells like I won't touch that damn water. I don't care how fresh Ever the filter since is. I came back to the United States from Ecuador, I have never drank any water from the tap. It's always been. I know better. But, uh, the one thing I do remember, I guess it did scar me. Um, because it's just so fucked up when I think about it, even now to this day. I mean, it's 1980. I'm in the first grade. My teacher is Miss Willis. She got the fucking polio braces on both sides for her legs, like some Forrest Gump type shit. Fucking robo bitch. Um, and, uh, I can remember repeatedly being told. Downstream, I some aluminum go manufacturing. Pee. I gotta go pee. And they're going to recess, and she would lock the door and then deadbolt it and lock me in the classroom while they all go outside and play for 30 minutes. And she'd tell me, you're stupid. You pee in the trash can. And I think back now, and I'm like, you don't do that to kids. You don't do that to nobody. No, you smack them on the back side. You smack them on the back of the head and say, "Hey, jackass, don't pee in the trash can." There you go, Rob. That's the out we needed. Good night, everybody. 